This is Diving Deep, a live coaching webinar with Destin Garrick. Today we'll be diving deep with Ryan. Ryan's one of my star clients who now after six months of working with me is having what many men might consider a very high quality problem to be facing. And later in this webinar, I'll be bringing on Lillian, who is in the process of a major awakening and is seeking guidance on how to navigate this awakening process while continuing to build her business and live her personal life. Okay, let's start with Ryan. Lane, like where were you, uh, let's say a year ago? What was going on? Sure. Through? Yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy to try and think back because it feels so long ago now, but um, so let's see, when, when we first met, um, like you said, I definitely had most areas of my life pretty handled. Business was fine, all, all that kind of stuff. But in the area of kind of relationships and women and my own um, just like embodiment and self-awareness, I definitely felt like something was missing. I didn't really know what that was or how to describe it, but I kind of knew it when I saw it in a person and I saw it in people like you and Ben who introduced us. Um, I Let's see, during when we first met, I think... Um, it'd been about a year since I'd had any kind of sexual relationship with, with a woman. Um, not really by choice, but more just because I was very focused on work and wasn't really addressing this aspect of my life. Um, as you now know, that's completely <laughs> reversed in a pretty big we'll, way, but we'll um, get to that in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, I, I didn't, I was in my head all the time just because of my job. It's, I, I run a company. I'm very, you know, th thinking all the time. And I was not very aware of, of my body um, being embodied, the, the subtleties of, of what's going on in my body. And that, that was a big piece that was missing, which um, I've definitely worked a lot on with you. And um, again, seen drastic changes in that. Um, yes, yeah, so that, that's a snapshot of where things were. Great, great. So I'm just gonna ask you a, a couple more questions about this. Um, from what I recall, um, it, you're kind of, you'd hit a point of like mm, frustration with this, feeling that there's something more that just seemed to be escaping you um, and really wanting and needing. You, you'd, you'd hit what I referred to as like that enough point, that point where <laughs> what was just can no longer be enough I don't know, I don't exactly know what it is, I don't exactly know how to get there, but one way or another, something has got to give. Do you say that's accurate? Yeah, that's pretty accurate. And it, it's, I didn't really know what it was that I was missing, but I knew it was something. And I mean, if I knew how to describe it, I could have just Googled it like I do with everything else and found the answer, but I didn't. And so it was more of an intuitive search where I just followed my gut, like this person seems to embody something that I want, let me talk to him and oh, he's gonna introduce me to this person stumbled but not really stumbled but intuitively like found my way to you and to this work wonderful and before we get into uh you know where we're going with the bulk of our time together today uh how what happened what changed for you um if i had to summarize it's really just a feeling in myself of just very being much more confident in who I am, um, the value I bring um, to the world, to women, but to, to the world in general, um, a, a real deep awareness of kind of um, my energy, other people's energy, how they're interacting, just becoming very aware of all the subtleties of what's going on there, being very like open hearted, um, authentic and, and uh, powerfully vulnerable. You know, I'm, really open about sharing me and everything about me now. You know, the fact I'm doing this call and willing to talk about pretty much whatever in front of people I don't know are watching, that's representative of that. I think I just am really confident in who I am now. And the more I show that to the world, the, the more results I get back. So I think if I had to summarize it, that's how I would summarize it. But there's been, there's so much more to it than that, as you know. Yeah, and, and some of that we'll be getting into today as well. Uh, first of all, I want to acknowledge you, uh, as well as you, Lillian, for uh, both taking the time to do this, this call in this way, but also what a gift you are really sharing with everybody here by opening up, uh, you know, 
we use the phrase in my work quite a bit of powerful vulnerability. And I know you, you referenced that phrase uh, as well, Ryan, that there's something, uh, there's something very powerful in, in a willingness to be vulnerable. There's something that, that opens up. It shows a certain strength of being in doing so as well. And you're modeling that very much here by going into very deep and personal areas of your life very openly and honestly um, in front of not only everybody who's here with us today, but anybody who might happen upon this uh, down the road. <laughs> and you know, who knows how many will end up being uh, helped and served by that process. So I just want to start out by really acknowledging you both for uh, you know, for that willingness within you. Okay. So, uh, with that, with that said, um, I first brought this up to Ryan a, a week ago, uh, inviting him to be on this uh, with us. And we just had some discussions around like where we would go and, and areas that we would, uh, touch upon. Uh, primarily we were, uh, speaking about, uh, well, maybe going more into um, helping him find greater stillness in his mind, an area that he often finds himself troubled by, uh, and an area that many people who are interested in, in this work that I share um, already have a practice around or want more, uh, more ability to find quiet or stillness with their mind, be more present. Uh, and then we discussed the other op option of playing with what I sometimes refer to as enticing desire, which is another area that, that Ryan's very interested in at this point of really how to, um, how to engage with another person's uh, energy and sexual energy to draw out uh, their, their energy and, and desire. And, um, and then everything changed. <laughs> I, <laughs> uh, what we're going to be diving in with with Ryan today is a bit unusual. It's not something that most people deal with. Um, however, it is something that is very present for him right now. And I am one to believe that uh, when it comes to this work, what ends up being most powerful is by getting real. What's, what's real and present right now what's hot right now and let's let's dive into that and uh strike while iron is, iron is hot so to speak and while this uh on the surface uh what the subject matter is might not be what you are directly dealing with in this moment in time in your life uh, i have no doubt that there's still going to be uh pearls of wisdom uh, in here for you as you witness his own journey um, as we go into this. So Ryan, why don't you share about what you're dealing with right now and what's really come up for you this past week? Sure. So I, I was sharing this with um, Destin and others in the group last night, but um, this past week has been just a, a crazy, crazy week, a, a reversal in sort of everything that my life has been up to date. Um, just in terms of attracting women into my life. Um, I've always sort of been in this mindset, I suppose, of scarcity. Like I mentioned, there was, you know, a 12 month period where I didn't have sex at all. Um, and I came into this work thinking like, how do I find myself and attract the women that I'm looking for through something? I don't know what my, the new energy I'm bringing. I'm now, <laughs> getting quite overwhelmed by the reverse problem. I just had a crazy week where I just literally, I think in the last week there's been six or seven different women come into my life, all sort of starting, you know, quite sexual relationships with these women. And I've, I became really overwhelmed not knowing how to deal with this, not knowing how to provide enough energy um, or feeling like I had to as well as just not knowing how to reconcile in my own mind. I, I'm just, uh, quite confused about, I suppose, what it is I want. I'd, I'd always been in serial monogamous relationships um, throughout my life and even serials like a bit, a bit of a stretch because there was quite a lot of gaps in there. And now I'm starting to think, do I still want that, you know, traditional paradigm or is there something more for me? And I don't quite know the answer yet, but all I do know is that every, every literally every day last week, I went out and met another two or three women that have, been 
I, I don't want to say like clawing at me, but it feels like they're just like pulling, trying to like get, get me. And I'm just like, ah, oh, I can't handle all this. And it's been really stressful. And I know this sounds kind of weird. Maybe I'm a little self-conscious about sharing it, but I, I was looking to Destin for some advice. on like, what do I do with all this? Um, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, thank you, Ryan. So again, uh, this, when he first shared this within our embodied man's path, uh, group, uh, online yesterday, my first feeling was, well, it brought back memories. Um, his story matches, uh, matches a good chunk of my own personal story of, uh, spending most of my life prior to that uh well primarily in some form of uh, serial monogamy uh when i did get into a relationship it was just like hold on for all i've got and um and then all of a sudden almost like a light switch uh being in a place of of massive abundance massive abundance of women uh, uh sex, feminine energy, and being overwhelmed, being overwhelmed and confused, like, what do I do with this? And who can I even talk to? Because uh, most people didn't understand, nor did they see the problem. But um, uh, it, it was suddenly very challenging. It didn't seem as if there were any role models uh, for what to do with this, that you know, the, the message that we get as men, I think, is primarily the, the more the better. Uh, more women, more sex, more everything, more, more, more. And, um, but it's a lot of energy. And particularly uh, as somebody who runs his own business, as somebody who feels like, you know, he's, a, he's on his path and doing his, his work in the world, there's also only so much time and energy. Uh, in, in one's day and in one's life. And so as you've been experiencing all this uh, massive shifts in your own energetic being, uh, finding your place of, of deep groundedness, running a ton of energy yourself now, um, people are being drawn to it in a way that, that they can't necessarily name. Uh, they don't necessarily know mm. why. Suddenly, <laughs> though, it's, it's just, it's like... Uh, you know, moths to a flame, so to speak. It's crazy. It was literally like a light switch. Like last week was just like bang. And I'm like, Oh, holy shit. Like and several of, of the women had all said like, I don't know what this feeling is. Like I've never felt this with anyone before. Like there's something about you. And I'm like, I wish, wish you could tell me what that was. Cause I don't even know what it is. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a definite challenge. Um, and I'm really glad that, you know, you went through the same experience so that I can get some guidance from you because I really just thought like, yeah, where do I, who do I even ask? I mean, any of my friends would be like, what the hell are you complaining about? Right. That's so let's get to that for, for a moment then, Ryan, what, what are you complaining about? Like what, what's the problem? Um, the problem is just, well, let's see There's a few problems. I, I want to make sure I navigate this. So my primary motivation in life is, really to be open-hearted and to to serve others and i'm really really scared about hurting other people and uh, and it's been a, a consistent problem in my life that i put other people's needs above my own as you know from some of our discussions i've been trying to you know put my own needs out there more but it, one you know, aspect of this situation of of you know variety of women in my life right now that all want a relationship of some sort with me how do I navigate that without hurting any of them is my first sort of primary concern. How do I like supply enough? How do I um, power myself with enough energy to be able to like not get burnt out by this? And also really just like, how do I figure out what I actually want? Do I just want to be with one partner? I definitely want kids in a family one day. How do I reconcile that with the desire to, there's all, all these different women have such different um, flavors of energy that I enjoy all of them in, in different ways. How, like, why can't I just have it all? I, I don't know. I, this is the kind of, this is what I'm thinking through and I can't really express it more succinctly than that because it's like so fresh. Okay. Thank you. Um, the, 
let's hit these pieces one at a time. Um, you started with um, not wanting to hurt anybody. And how do you manage this? How do you manage these engage, uh, engaging with uh, all these different women who are coming to you without, uh, without hurting anybody and ideally like really being in the, your utmost integrity? Mm -hmm. um, there's two major parts of this. Um, there is that which you can do and there is that which is out of your hands. Um, there are one thing that I try to make clear with the single men, particularly who, who, who engage with my work, who are not in a place right now where they're looking to settle down yet or um, wanting a single partner at that time is I just try to make clear that look like you can cultivate an incredible amount of, uh, of mm, sexual power, might you say, and, uh, and have a whole wide variety of experiences and do so without leaving a trail of wreckage behind you. Mm -hmm. And that really, you know, again, I want to acknowledge you first and foremost for the fact that that is on your mind right from the right from the start. You're not being careless. It's how can I do this in my integrity? How can I do this without, you know, without creating a lot of suffering? Um, and what I've come to believe is that the, the single biggest thing that you can do is. Um, is come from a place of transparency. Mm -hmm. um, find your find your deepest truth of where you are, and it's not your truth of uh, of forevermore. It's it's knowing what your deepest truth is in this moment, and mm -hmm. what you have to offer and what you don't have to offer, and being endlessly transparent with that. What I found this is not foolproof. This is not at all foolproof. This is what I mean by there's that which is in your hands and there's that which is not in your hands. Because hmm. um, you can be as open, honest, direct, communicative as, you know, 100% and transparent every step of the way and still have a, a woman who you're engaging with uh, say, yes, yes, yes. I, this works for me. Yes, yes, yes. And actually every step of the way um she's getting deeper and deeper emotional attachment um can can i dig deeper into that a little bit because that's really present from from last night um a woman that you know that stayed over last night and with this idea of radical transparency in mind we had this conversation i pretty much explained where i'm at and what i'm looking for what i can offer now and what i can't this is only like the the third time i've seen her so i i felt like it was pretty aggressive to have this deep of a conversation when we'd only you know been together um once before this so she she clearly clearly cares very deeply for me and very clearly expressed that she's looking for like a monogamous partner and i very clearly explained that i'm not and um her response was basically well this feels so good i've never felt this before i'm not, not sure i'm ever going to feel it again so i'm willing to just do that for what you know do what you want and just hope you don't get hurt and uh, she doesn't get hurt from it and like on one hand that's that's great i want to take her word for it but on the other hand i can feel her sadness like i'm really sensitive to her energy that it's not really what she wants but she does want something and so she'll take what she can get and i don't know if that's just in my head that you know i have to let at some level i have to let her be responsible for herself i can't be responsible for everyone but at the same time i, I don't know i it concerns me. Yeah. So the, my invitation to you to c come back to in, if you relate to this woman, every woman, every man, every person that you come into contact from the vantage point of, uh, let no one who comes into contact with you, uh, or leave without being better off for having met you. Um, mm. holding that frame in all of your interactions, 
so that yes, like have this be not just a conversation that you have once and now, okay, now just, you know, go, but rather <laughs> make sure that, that first and foremost, you, you mean, you hold your energy from that place. You can still continue to add like, how, how can you engage with her from a place that this experience too is additive to her life? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, hold, uh, hold the space of the container for, her to have that which she is seeking and for this to be uh, a step in that, the in that direction. One of the areas I, I feel, mm, anytime I make any sort of gender distinction, please note that these are just tendencies that I've noticed over time. They're not absolutes by any means. Um, men can have this type of experience, women can have uh, the other type of experience. These are trends that I've noticed um, that a where where I've seen many women, not just um, lovers, friends, acquaintances, clients, um, uh, create a lot of their own pain and suffering uh, seems to stem from the deeply rooted uh, belief or holding whether it's whether it's something genetic whether it's culturally ingrained that uh, that eat this whatever this is must must be it this is where I want to um, grab onto hold create the attachment and this I want this to be it forever and this this I feel is one of the things that can really pull us out of, of presence can really, when we're really stuck or holding on to an idea of what something is supposed to be, it can rob us of the ability to really experience the beauty of what is. Um, that's a, what I just said is it's a big thing. It's a big, big deal. And it's not something that's simply, um, that's simply solved if it's ever solved. What I feel that you can do as, you know, as a man in your power, as a man who's already hold, uh, is finding himself able to hold so much is, mm, you know, again, like, Oh, hold this woman or any and all of the women that you're coming into contact with, help them hold, hold the vision of uh, who she is, who she is seeking to become in the world and what she is see seeking to create in her world and hold hmm. that vision for her and with her just as much as you hold the, um, the one for yourself. Hmm. And, and so with that, like, you know, you can look and see for those ways in which you can help, help that occur. But sometimes even, even, sometimes even, uh, just being that open-hearted, connected man uh, that she's drawn to in the way that she's doing can act as a catalyst for her in her life, where, mm -hmm. where this experience can open something up that will allow that, that which she is really seeking to come in. Yeah, I definitely am um, getting the sense that it, it is opening something up for her in more ways than one as as I've mentioned to you before, I, I've been finding myself in this role as almost a, a, a healer lately um, with women who have you know, got some kind of blocks and I seem to be the one to be opening them up. And in the case of this particular woman I'm talking about now, like she, she shared with me that she was sexually abused last year and completely shut down for like a year. And I think actually I was probably the first person she's been with since then. And again, I found myself in this healing role, which I love, but at the same time, I just want to make sure I'm very, very careful and, uh, you know, of her, of her feelings and her uh, situation. Yeah. You know, this does touch upon the, you know, one of the other major pieces that, uh, that sooner or later you're going to need to address, which is this aspect of kind of being deathly afraid of hurting other people. Right. 
and there is a certain that probably is more my issue yes it is <laughs> but but anything that you brought to me today you know i would i would approach from that perspective because you're the one who's who's sitting here today mm -hmm. so there's only there's only so much you can do as far as somebody else's um uh, thought patterns belief systems um choices but you have full choice around your own Um, green eggs and ham wrote, uh, how do you address that fear? Yeah, that fear of hurting others. Um, I've car I carried it a lot in, in my life. Um, I'm trying to feel into how present it is for me at this point. I know it's a lot less present for me now than ever before. I think a lot of it, I, th I believe that, that when we do that, uh, when, we, when as a man, we do that with a woman, there's, this, I feel like it kind of feeds into that, uh, in infantilism of women that, that's, uh, occurs a lot in our society. Uh, that's kind of a remnant of our larger patriarchal culture that I believe is transitioning, um, in which m men feel, uh, well, men can feel a responsibility to, uh, to take care of a woman, not necessarily as from a partnership place, but almost from a paternal place. Hmm. And I, I, this is an area that I've, I've spent a lot of time kind of diving into and thinking about as well, that, you know, I, I believe it's one of the things that fundamentally needs to shift as we're, uh, as we're shifting into a more egalitarian society that with the, with the rise of, um, of women coming into their power comes both uh, rights and responsibilities. And, you know, finding that balance of those rights and responsibilities that come with it, I think, has, um, has not always been smooth as we're in this transition. <laughs> it's been messy at points. So I think that there's something on both of our sides in order to address. So there is a certain degree of, of just of practice of you can ut even utilize this woman as an opportunity to practice of it's trusting in yourself of your goodness. Uh, the, you, know, you, you, you led so much of, the, of this conversation from starting, starting with your uh, living with an open heart. Hmm. trust in that practice trusting in that that if you're a true truly living from that place and moving from that place it's not to say you won't make mistakes and it's not to say that anyone won't won't be hurt it's also trusting that uh, she will survive that she is hmm. strong that just as you have experienced uh, pain both physical and emotional in your life you have not only moved through it but oftentimes those pain points have helped catalyze something within you yes yep um, so, yeah. ha have helped you grow and become what you're capable of being I think we tend to be so pain phobic in our society thinking <laughs> everything's supposed to be smiles and pleasure all the time and you know the Part of my roots are in uh, a tantric spirituality, and tantra really is about embracing of the whole of life, this full spectrum living, and that includes everything from you know the up, ecstatic bliss and uh, you know, ecstatic pleasure to uh, deep pain and grief, anger and rage, the the fullness of our humanity by opening ourselves and allowing ourselves to, to feel it, it moves through much quicker and we find that we can hold it and it helps us expand and it helps us grow. Mm. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. It's a, a good um, mental model or frame that, that I can use because I can see how it's still serving others, but, not necessarily being scared or protecting them from all hurt and that sort of thing. Uh, you mentioned the desire to be a, a father at some point. And yeah. 
you know, I, I hold that as well. Um, and there's, I think that it, it's very common, if not uni nearly universal, of a parent's desire to protect their child from, from being hurt. But also, mm. sooner or later, every parent realizes that there's only so much that they can do. Their child is going to get hurt. No matter what you do, no matter how many safeguards you try to put into place, your child is going to get sick, your child is going to get hurt, your child is going to experience unfairnesses of life. And uh, you know, we have that recognition with ourselves as well uh, on an individual basis, because I don't know about you, but no, no, in my own life, no matter what I, I've done, I continue to uh, experience challenges, <laughs> things that, that hurt, uh, pains. Um, and then, you know, it's what we do with that pain that, uh, that really speaks to what type, of, um, what type of life we end up having. You know, as I say, uh, um, mm, pain may be mandatory, but suffering is optional. How to, how right. to, to it. So getting back to um, being in your, in your truth, uh, maintaining that level of transparency, um, from what I, I understand with where you're at right now, is you're on a path of self-discovery right now. Exactly. And you're committed to that path of self-discovery. And if you were really feeling yourself like your heart's longing and that drive towards this, this path of self-discovery right now. And um, suddenly you found yourself in relate, like in a committed monogamous relationship with one of these women, because you felt that that's what she wanted and you didn't want to hurt her. How mm. do you think that that would pan out? Um, I would try to resent her. Obviously I think, um, yeah, that it wouldn't wouldn't be a healthy way to start a relationship. And so, and what impact might that have on her? Um, would ultimately end up hurting her. So, knowing knowing that, um, or holding that the belief, how does that affect your? Mm, that that part of you that's well afraid of of hurting and uh having it in uh how would how do you feel that can it impact your interactions with this woman or any of these women as you move forward well i think um i, I liked what you said before as as long as i'm living with an open heart and being transparent and, and honest um and realizing that these women are partners, not children or, you know, infants or whatever you said before, and that they have some level of responsibility for themselves. If I approach it in that way, except that there may be some short term hurt, but that's just life. I think that that approach definitely resonates with me I, I, rather than the approach of avoid all hurt at all costs, which ultimately will probably actually end up having a reverse effect. Yeah. Tends to. Um, so the other major piece, glad to hear it, Robert. He wrote that. It's such a good point for me right now. Um, the other piece that I heard from you was, okay, there's all, there's all this attention coming your way, all these women um, being drawn to you. Um, kind of, you mentioned not to say clawing <laughs> as you made clawing movements. Um, I know. I really felt that one night that I was just, I just needed to get away, <laughs> get out of here. Cause I just felt like so much um, pulling of like wanting something from me. And I didn't know I had the capacity to offer that or not. Yeah. I, I would say that it's a combination of the fact that you are showing up in a way now that um, to use economic terms, demand <laughs> is far exceeding supply. <laughs> far exceeding supply and there is such a deep craving and longing amongst women today for 
a man like you are showing up as. As a man who has made, who has really made right with his own sexuality, who can, who is solid and knows who he is, is uh, present, who uh, isn't grasping or needing in regards to sexuality. It ha is connected to his heart and his body and his energy. Um, is not grasping or, or I already said that. <laughs> this is how big it is. <laughs> is not grasping or needing in in his engaging with her. So many women, and I think I'm understating it by saying so many women, uh, especially you mentioned being out at clubs or bars. Their experience being out is of uh, can be of of men who are. Uh, either being ignored or men who are just seem to want something from them. I've heard this from women so many times that, that it just seems like uh, they always just like want something from me. It's like they're trying to get something or take something from me. And from what I'm gathering from you right now, from what I understand through our journey together, uh, you have shifted your paradigm around uh, women and sexuality in such a way where you feel abundance. Uh, so mm -hmm. you're not acting from scarcity and that you're relating from uh, what you have, knowing that you have something of value to offer a woman and mm -hmm. really engaging from that place of offering and sharing versus, you know, um, where is this, where, <laughs> <laughs> you know, whose pussy can I get? <laughs> um, and it, it, it's unfortunately all, all too rare today and you do so while uh, while maintaining your connection to your sexuality so most men uh, I find that most men seem to fall into one of two camps either they are like in their sexuality and uh, disconnected from the their hearts or the rest of themselves and disconnected from the other. They're just, you know, on like sexual overdrive um, and seeking on what they want. Uh, or they're very like heart centered and above very, uh, very nice, very kind, um, make women feel safe around them, but there's no turn on there. So I feel like you've, you've really found that sweet spot that, you know, I call the magic formula of making a woman feel safe and turned on at the same time. Mm. And when, when, when a woman feels safe and turned on uh, together, watch out. That's, <laughs> that, that, um, that's when you see uh, the, the rawness and the power of a woman's authentic sexuality. And I, I, I guess I'm on to something. Because uh, Oda Julie wrote, totally agree, and Deva wrote, hell yeah. <laughs> so, um, so bringing it back to, to your situation, Ryan, um, so you're speaking about needing a, uh, how do you, how do you handle all this energy that's coming towards you, and how do you be enough energy? to mm. engage with it. Yeah, that was the initial challenge I felt. I think it was just a bit of a shock to the system. I feel like as I start to sort of recalibrate and get used to this new normal, which you know seems to be the uh, new normal now, um, I feel like I'll figure it out. But um, it just initially was a, a, a shock and I really couldn't deal with the, didn't really know how to deal with it. Yeah. So part of this, um, part of what I learned uh, in this regard was realizing that I had to have my own boundaries. Mm. Um, I guess something that I don't think we really get much role modeling around as men because most men live in a state of scarcity when it comes to women and sex. And, um, and so, you know, we have the meme in our, in our culture of like men are dogs when it comes to sex. If, if, you know, if there's an opportunity, a man is just like, <laughs> yes, please. And uh, I, I find that very damaging. Um, mm. it, 
I remember when that flood first came, my initial instinct was just, yes. And basically any and every woman who was wanting to be sexual with me, I was just a yes to. And at that time it, it was a lot. And then I, I hit this point sort of like what you're hitting right now, where I was like, whoa, hold on a second. Is this what I want? Like I, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling this pull on me in every direction. I, mm. This is taking so much of my focus and my energy. And what, what do I even want? And, and so mm. it, you're needing to learn how to do so, something that uh, most women have, have to learn on some level much earlier. Uh, you know, you have, the, uh, you have the gift of the fact that uh, there's, uh, you know, you're 35, 35, four? Yeah, well, almost <laughs> next month. That... Um, uh, when this is coming in, whereas a lot of a lot of women ha have to start learning about how to keep this constant barrage of sexual energy that's coming towards them out when they're kids, you know, when they're teens at at oldest, and which is this is one of the reasons why like a lot of women don't do it very smoothly. Um, <laughs> uh, a lot of women do so in ways that I consider very messy. And uh, part of what I see as part of what needs to, uh, to shift and heal for men and women to really come to a place of deeper, uh, deeper empathy and compassion for one another. So I'm starting to get off on a little tangent there because that's something I can. That's really interesting. But it's your place right now of really learning about how do you hold your boundaries to let in that which you desire and keep out that which you don't desire. Mm -hmm. so my invitation to you, as my invitation is to the women listening here who get a lot of uh, attention that perhaps you do not want, is how can you approach this from a place of um, holding your boundaries while maintaining an open heart? Mm. Yeah. I guess I don't, I don't quite know what that looks like, but I know I understand the idea and I, I guess I'll figure it out as I go. <laughs> First of all, I have a lot of faith in you. <laughs> um, Andrew wrote, that feels hard. Um, part of what I've discovered as what I relate to as, as strength and power is how much can I hold? What can I, what can I hold while keeping my heart open that the clearer uh, and again, I think this translates for a, a lot of women as well, as well as um, some of the men here that the, the more connected to your own power you are, the more you're able to connect to your deepest truth, your authentic truth, your desires, your fears and boundaries and know that you can communicate and maintain those, the easier it is to not get triggered into a fear or anger. Because you feel that's when you have that deep connection to you, to your truth and, and a solidity in the feeling that you can communicate and maintain it. Uh, that's foundational to feel really safe. And when we feel really safe as we move through life, that's where it becomes a lot easier to be open hearted. This is where that gentleness with strength uh, comes mm -hmm. in. Yeah. This is why to me, like true power isn't that trap, isn't trying to um, exert power over others, but that when true power is when you you hold such a deep sense of personal power. Really, the only thing you want to see is, is others rise up with you. And that's what I'm hearing from you, Ryan, with your desire to live with an open heart and, um, and to really serve and to bring that into all of your engagements with women is how can you approach these connections, whether they're years long or whether they're hours long, from that place of still um, of service. Yep. Yeah, that's great. 
really like that idea. Okay. Uh, David Sim wrote, are you saying that if you are in your power and you know yourself, the more in control of the reality you create is, the better influence you can make? I would say that's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> that um, uh, take that time. You're welcome. Take that time. So in fact, I, I really encourage everyone to to prioritize that in in their lives of of the commitment to self knowledge, to knowing yourself at a deeper and deeper level. And the biggest thing that I found kind of stops people from really authentically knowing themselves is a uh, deeply ingrained uh, self-judgment and self-criticism. Um, you know, low esteem for themselves, that uh, fear or feeling of not being enough or there is something inherently wrong with me that seems to lurk in the background of well, most people on some level. And when, when that is there, as long as that is there, then all your view of yourself into being filtered through that, um, and it can be really difficult to really uh, view yourse yourself and your experiences uh, objectively because there's that part that wants to judge. So the that is a relationship your relationship to yourself is is so valuable to put at the forefront of ever of ever healing you find that deep deep level of self-love and uh there is a fantastic book called the six pillars of self-esteem by dr nathaniel brandon uh brayden sorry uh the six pillars of self-esteem it's it's uh it, it it's a very powerful book really about the, these six different areas or pillars that make up what uh, he refers to as self-esteem. Most people in our culture, we speak of self-esteem as something you, you either have like good self-esteem or you, you have low self-esteem, but it's, it's far more complex than that. It, it, it's this huge uh, gray area with these gradients. And it's more of like finding where can you have a greater, uh, esteem for yourself, greater uh, belief in your self-efficacy. That's a big one that I bring in. Self-efficacy will define as your belief in your ability to, to have an effect, to have an effect mm -hmm. on the world around you, and uh, your ability to believe in your ability to affect change within as well. And as you cultivate that self-efficacy, as you really um, believe uh, through and through that you have the capacity to create uh, change in your life and in the world around you, anything becomes possible. So I got a little uh, off track there, um, Ryan, but the last thing I want to say to you before, you know, like we kind of close this piece here is that um, one Trust in yourself. Trust in your natural goodness. You have a beautiful heart. Conti as you cultivate your own power more and more, spend at least as much time continuing to cultivate your heart and open your heart more and more. And mm -hmm. so long as you do that in tandem, you don't have anything to fear. And the other thing I'd like to share is Keep losing it. <laughs> ah, knowing as far as knowing what it is that you want, you don't. The short answer is you don't need to know. You don't need to know what you ultimately want. That's what this period of uh, self exploration is about. It's through it's through this exploring that you'll start to realize more and more of what you want, and it's mm. not static. Um, you know, I spoke of having a familiarity with uh, this, of what you're going through, but for me, it's a memory. My, <laughs> it, it's past tense for me. It was first this overwhelming, oh my God, like, what is this? Is this amazing? Or is this still like challenging? I don't even know what's going on. And now it, it's, I hit a certain point 
where it was exactly what I wanted and it was lovely. And then I hit a certain point where it wasn't what I wanted anymore. Um, I, you know, we get older, our, <laughs> our priorities change. Um, I had a certain point where I was less interested in women and more interested in finding my woman. Mm -hmm. And does that mean that there was something lesser or wrong with the period that I was in a few years ago? No, I don't think so. I think it's that that was then, this is now. And remaining connected to this truth and living from there. Mm -hmm. Live from your truth, live from your heart, be in transparency, serve, and you'll do great. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. That's a lot of really good um, stuff that I'm going to sit with and I think I'll be able to use as a, as a model as I sort of navigate this new new reality that's just appeared. <laughs> yeah. Um, we'll continue to follow up. Uh, uh, Ryan is part of the Embodied Man's Path of Sexual Consciousness, this men's group program that uh, I've been running. And so um, do follow up with us within the group, both uh, on our members only Facebook group, as well as um, during our private webinars. And um, I want to thank you again for taking this time with us, for sharing, for being so open. And uh, my pleasure. I might, depending on time, I might pop in with you at the very end just to see if anything has kind of mm, just germinated <laughs> during that time. Sure. Okay, wonderful. And thank you, Ryan. Thanks. So, um, in a moment, we'll move on to Lillian. I hope that uh, you're there and ready for us, Lillian. And I don't see you. Um, and oh, there you are. Uh, it, again, while I know that uh, this kind of uh, massive abundance with women in sex that uh, that Ryan is experiencing right now, uh, you know, many of the men here may not have direct or personal experience with. But nonetheless. Uh, I think that we touched upon a number of, of pieces that are really relevant for just about anybody's life if they really take it on. So I invite you to really look and feel into how, how what one piece of what we addressed w with Ryan could you really take into your life? Uh, could you apply today and this week uh, to even just experiment with and see how that's, um, how that affects, affects the natural unfolding of your life. So with that, I wanna bring on Lillian. Uh, hi. 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 And, and where are you right now? Uh, I'm in Florence, Italy right now. I'm really glad I can join you guys. I, I was hoping I could show you Florence, but it gets so loud at night outside where I usually work during the day, so I have to do it in my room. <laughs> Got it, thank you, uh, Lillian. So Lillian and I uh, uh, met at Burning Man this year um, very uh, spontaneously and seemingly, you know, just one of those con uh, connections that just seems like, well, I tend to use the term <laughs> magical, just that. Uh, yes, that, it was magical <laughs> <laughs> that indication to me that there's something larger going on beyond what my logical or rational mind might be able to explain uh, some larger tapestry that's being woven and so Lily <laughs> it was magical what why do you say that like what what made it magical for you so um I this is my second year going to Burning Man I the only reason I went back is because I had such a shitty time uh, last year during my first year <laughs> that I, I basically decided that if I have an irrational fear about something that people created this massive party that you know people threw in order to have fun then I have to go back just to squash those fears and then so that's why I went back again and then I actually it felt right to bring two uh, uh, um, people that were brand new this year into Burning Man 
and uh, Sai initiated them and they had a transformative experience. And for me, um, the transformative experience I, I had was about five minutes after I went off on my own and went into my flow of like, okay, well, it just feels right to leave now. And I, so I flew off and I met Dustin in, within five minutes. And then so we just, you know, and then, and then Dustin, thank you for taking me on this journey where um, I think it was a journey of um, self, complete self-actualization and falling in love with myself. So that was a really, really magical journey for me. I think I cried for three hours straight during this uh, uh, event, which I think Dustin, you should tell us about. <laughs> <laughs> I was falling my eyes. That was so embarrassing. Um, <laughs> all right. I, I was on my way to uh, uh, Julia Allison's unconventional wedding to herself. Um, when I stumbled upon Lillian. And uh, amongst other things, I ended up taking, uh, Lillian ended up coming along for that ride. And uh, what was really beautiful about, like when I first read or saw uh, uh, Julie Allison's posting around this, there was a feeling of like, okay, you know, what, what is this uh, wedding to herself? And uh, I think there are a lot of people who kind of just projected, um, ideas of uh, maybe even uh, conceit or self-aggrandizing uh, onto her, her for like you know who gets married to themselves at uh, what what is this so uh, Lillian like why don't you uh, briefly just share like what what about it had you cry and uh, and what did it represent for you um, so um, a big part of the thing from last year for me that I knew was going to carry over was um, anything that I feared um, at Burning Man, it literally would just happen to me <laughs> within five minutes, right? So um, from my first year of Burning Man last year. And then so I knew that love was going to be a thing that was going to come up. I just didn't really know in what form or shape. And then I was really, really afraid that this was going to come in the form of me meeting someone but that actually didn't happen. So what ended up happening was just that, you know, I went into this event not knowing what to expect at all. It just kind of felt right, so I went along with it. And then what, what had transpired was just that I, you know, being spiritual guidances that they are, you know, Julia Allison, you said, and then yourself and uh, the camp over there, um, they wanted us to do start initiate the process by uh, doing this exercise with someone who's next to you, a complete stranger, where you look in their eyes, you acknowledge that you are whole and complete and you're loved. You know, and so, so for some reason, that process was something that I'm trying to get to myself. And then so for some reason, I just start bawling. And then the entire, and then I, I, I noticed that whenever I go deeper into that process, I would start to cry more, which means that there must be something for me to process. So as we went through that journey with, with um, this woman, everything just triggered me. And so I just kept bawling. And then what had transpired was that I was being held by this beautiful human being. Uh, I have no idea who he is. And then it was just you know, a whole complete love. And he just recognized me for who I am. And even though I was blowing my eyes out and probably, you know, not very attractive at all, um, it was recognized as beautiful. And it was recognized as strength, even though I felt extremely vulnerable inside. So that was the journey that I went on. Okay. Well, thank, thank you for uh, sharing <laughs> around that. Uh, I'd like to just do something with you, Lillian. I know that um, when we spoke uh, last week and uh, you know I invited you onto this uh, call with us today um, something came up during that conversation with you I ended up giving you a a practice to explore during that week uh, why don't you share with us what that practice was yeah so um, so you wanted me to basically for every work, waking hour uh, every hour that I'm awake, spend about a minute to do a deep uh, breathing meditation. So, um, so yeah, so so it was a very for for a whole week before our conversation today. So, um, so yeah, that was it's been a very transformative journey um, to just really stay in this moment and be really grounded and uh, and to really just 
come to this place where I am able to be fully here and experience, you know, everything that, that, that is to experience. Something was going on though, when you were starting this, this practice, something was arising that uh, you were seeking additional uh, guidance around what, what was happening for you? Um, which part? <laughs> Do you see me? Oh yeah. Okay. So, um, so, um, yeah. So for some reason, one day about a year ago, um, something really bizarre happened where, um, I, you know, one day I suddenly start to feel everyone's thoughts and feelings in my body, um, viscerally about 10 times stronger than my own feelings. And, uh, and then something weird happened where this place right near my, uh, you know, like my, um, the connection between my collarbones started to soar. And then so something really bizarre that happened and I, you know, luckily had your guidance where I could just Facebook you and or, or, or find you by text and ask you what I should do next. And then so um, for some reason, when, as I continue to meditate, even though it's just a minute, uh, every waking hour, as the day progresses, this soreness actually increased. And this is something that I was really afraid of a year ago when I first had this experience of an opening up where I can feel everyone's thoughts and feelings. So this is actually very, very fearful for me. Um, you know, I wouldn't wish this upon anybody. Um, I think I've kind of been able to. Mm. It seems that Lillian has frozen on us. Uh, while she remains frozen, <laughs> uh, I'm going to try to just, play translator a little bit around some of what's uh, what's going on here but um, hmm. I, you seem like you're coming back but you're muted give me one moment Lily and I'm still just going to uh, um, do we hear you Lily yeah can you hear me okay okay yeah so just hold on okay, one, one moment then that when I met Lillian, she, one second. She was also, you know, in, in her own place of uh, um, self-discovery and uh, a couple of things that we had been discussing um, through our work together involved uh, mm, what it is being a woman in a uh, like in a, in the startup culture, uh, in in the business realm, and the, the unique challenges that come with that, and how to and Lillian's commitment to maintaining her connection to her feminine uh, while uh, while continuing to to grow and build her business. Um. <laughs> So part of what Lillian's really been discovering that's been very powerful for her has been uh, a really a, a deep connection to her own body and her body's wisdom. And she mentioned about a year ago starting to feel things that she'd never felt before. She described as feeling like she was feeling other people's uh, thoughts and feelings and um, how she's been able to utilize that to help her make her decisions as she moves through the world, both on, on a personal level and as a professional level. Am I getting that right, Lillian? Yeah, that's about right. Um, so yeah, so now um, I would say that um, it's, it's, you know, it's been morphing and changing in shape and form. And so now all I really wanna, I don't really wanna know so much, so all I go by is that, I don't like to judge people, but I would in a social setting or uh, I would just kind of be able to trust myself and trust my gut to say how I really feel without holding back, even if it, even if it doesn't really quite make sense to my brain or my logic and to be able to have no fear and do that. And then to really just not judge people and then to just really go with, um, you know, if I'm in a social setting, I will only talk to whoever feels really good to me. I will not care what anyone's wearing, what their titles are, you know, if they don't feel good to me, they don't feel good to me. I wouldn't approach them no matter what. And just really honoring myself and just staying true to that. 
Yeah, thank you. So I believe like this, this is an area that I feel like I've learned so much about over the past um, seven, eight years. And I'd say I primarily have done so much of my learning in this area from the women in my life that it is, uh, yeah, I mentioned earlier during this uh, webinar around how, uh, you know, I believe that we're living in a time in which uh, there's a rebalancing of masculine and feminine energies on this planet that, that the, we'll, we'll call the feminine is rising up and um, it's imperfect. It's been messy and, um, you know, imperfect on both sides, but, um, uh, but that, I'm sorry, I got distracted by, um, that comment. Yeah, I have nothing to do with that. <laughs> I apologize for that. Um, I didn't even think about it until you posted. Um, so I believe that, that part of that, you know, we, Masculine and feminine, I think of as energies that exist in the universe. It's more than just like men and women, but um, that uh, men carry both a, a masculine energy and feminine energy. Women carry both feminine energy and masculine energy. Most men carry more masculine energy. Most women carry more feminine energy. And often that... Um, uh, a lot of the things that I find and teachings that exist out there put all of the focus and emphasis on men uh, getting more in touch with their masculine and women getting more in touch with their feminine. And uh, where I come from, where the, 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 the root of where my teachings re really come from is that, uh, yes, get in touch with your, your deepest essence. And often, for many of us, there's something off, that there, there are some uh, uh, blocks and traumas, wounds that, it, that were collected over the course of our lives in regards to, to that part of ourselves. And, and I also believe that it's very important for um, uh, men to make peace with their feminine energy and women to make peace with their masculine energy to find and discover what your true balance is within you of these energies and how to work with, uh, with that flow of, uh, of these energies within you. So that said, uh, this, this type of, um, uh, Lillian spoke first of, of the intellect and the, how her mind wants to, to judge or think about, um, you know, what's the best thing to do or, or uh, make judgments about people based on different things. And then there's this other part. And you know, generally, I relate to that, uh, that intellect side and the logical and rational side as being rooted in, you know, what I think of as the masculine energy. And um, on the other part of ourselves, that the, the rooted in our feminine energy is that, that in, intuition, that knowing without thought. It's like almost like this, this direct connection to, to uh, a higher wisdom. And this is something that Lillian has been uh, learning, has been diving into uh, quite a bit over this past year. That seemed to come into her life spontaneously. And then she's been cultivating it now through our connection is even more consciously cultivating it. How, how do I trust in that more and more and allow that, that connection and that inner wisdom to, to guide all the choices that you're making? Do I have this right? Yeah, that's about right. Okay. So over this past week, you were doing this, uh, this meditation that I'm actually just going to guide you through right now, along with everybody else who's watching and listening. Uh, so we can have this shared experience together here. And... Yeah. Then I'm going to ask you a few questions on it, but let that go for now. So wherever <laughs> you are, I'm going to put the spotlight back on you. Ellen. Wherever you are, I invite for you to uh, sit up. 
with your feet firmly planted to the ground, your spine erect. So rather than being slouched in any way, you want your vertebrae stacked one on top of the next. And then we're just going to take this moment just because it's, it tends to be easier um, to close your eyes and focus your attention inward. And we're simply going to take a minute or two to focus on yourself, to let everything else go, hmm. to slow down your breath and feel into your body. Feel into your body. You can notice thoughts that come in and go out, but they're not the focus. The focus is what are you feeling in your body? And it's not to make any judgments about those feelings. You have to return back to the feeling. What do you notice? And slow down that breath. And take that breath really deep, almost as, as if the inter, like your internal body cavity is like a balloon and you are filling up that balloon, breathing down to the depths of that balloon, so to, to your pelvic floor, so down to your sex, feeling your pelvic floor expand as you inhale, and then expanding out in your sides and expanding front and back, and expanding all the way to the top, filling that balloon, breathing in. Notice how slow, how deep that breath was. And also just how relaxed it can be. Slow and deep and relaxed again. And you may notice that as you do this, as your breath really slows down, and as you add a little sound on your exhale, that your mind just naturally slows down as well. Your mind naturally becomes more quiet. And another slow deep breath. Now, Lillian, feel into your heart center. And notice if you're feeling that soreness that you were feeling last week or not. What are you feeling? Hmm. The deeper I go, the more present that it is. So you have a smile on your face, but you're speaking of the presence of the soreness? Yeah, so um, this also happens when I really deeply connect with people. Mm. And then it just, it just feels like my heart opens up to the people that I'm connecting with. And I just have this profound love for them as human beings, you know? And so when that happens, really sores. So I think it has some kind of connections to that. So. Well, I think that part of what's happening is that your heart's been opening. Um, that what may have been shut down or closed for a long period of time has been opening over this past year. And it's been opening rapidly and quite wide. Mm. And so with that, it's like growing pains, you could say. But, you know, you're courageous, and I notice you keep going. <laughs> it's been fun now. <laughs> yeah. Do you notice any difference, um, both Lillian as well as those of you who are watching? What do you notice, if anything, that's different with how you feel, your energy, your body, your mind now versus before we did that brief meditation? So I feel more present, uh, more open, and that I can really more fully experience and be in this moment. And I feel very grounded. So it just, you know, it makes you really happy. It doesn't really, um, 
doesn't really matter what happens. It's like, you know, the sadness is so sad, so good, you know? And then it's just all the feelings. We're human. We get to experience all of it. How beautiful mm. and the fun is that? What a great roller coaster ride. So that's kind of how it feels. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty well said. <laughs> um, I'm just going to ask you about something because I know that you're uh, committed to making this shift <gasps> one time during this conversation so far. One time. Um, I heard you say, um, oh, what was your wording? I might have it slightly off, but it was uh, something like you feel so good when you, uh, when you take in the bre breath like that, when you feel so much. I, I, I forget what it was related to, but uh, we had a conversation that started at Burning Man, I believe is one of the ways in which I touched your life. <laughs> Uh, about uh, about your how you utilize language and its impact on and its impact on how you experience your reality. Can you share something about that? Can you tell me a little bit more about uh, which you're referring to? I feel like we had, even though we haven't known each other for a fairly long time, I feel like we've been on this incredible transformative journey together, which is you know a credit to how an incredible human being you are. But I actually don't. Don't remember which part of the conversation this would be. Okay. Um, well, it really stood out for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> when I met you, I picked up in your language pattern that ah, <laughs> I remember that that you that was a great lesson. <laughs> <laughs> so and, it, <laughs> and it's one that I've noticed you've largely sh shifted already. And once, have I? Wow. and once during this conversation, have I uh, noticed you revert back to that old way of being? So um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Lillian had this tendency to kind of speak in the second person when she would be describing her own experience. And uh, Lillian, I'd prefer for you to kind of put your words to it. Yeah, so, um, so when I first met Dustin, um, this is how I knew he was a shit. <laughs> um, so we're sitting down, and then he's looking at me in this mysterious way. Um, <laughs> and he just knows everything about you. And you're just like, okay, wait, wait, wait. Just know everything. Oh, so, so here, here, <laughs> Sorry about that. Here it is. <laughs> and then, so, <laughs> I'll get to the point. Um, but that was just too much fun, so I had to, had to frame it. Sorry about that. Um, so... Every time I would talk about myself or my story, uh, my default would be to uh, talk about it in a, you know, like a third person or a second person tense where I would say, you know, instead of saying, you know, when this happened, I felt this and that, and this happened to me, and I this and I that, I would say we, even though I'm the only person experiencing this for no, myself. And we, so we didn't do we, it, it was usually spoke of you. Um, you. Oh, right. Okay. You. Yeah. I use you a lot. Yeah. And you, you shared with this to me, you shared this with me as something that you picked up from your mother in childhood. But I, I, I like to see if we can just get an example out about this to make it more real and tangible for the people who are, who are watching. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> if I can revert back to my old patterns. Um, okay. So. What should we, uh, which experience should we share that would be most relevant? <laughs> uh, what the experience <laughs> is, it, it doesn't really matter. The part that, that's most relevant is, um, is the, it really has to do with the, the uh, power of um, awareness of your language um, and how, it, how mm. it's been affecting you in your life. That's the part that mm. I'm, I'm most intrigued by. Yeah, so... Um, um, to be honest with you, I feel like this journey has been really transformative. So, um, so instead of saying, I feel like, like I have just done now, I would say, you feel like this is the transformative journey. So I actually put myself in a, you know, a second person tense and not referring to myself as me. And, uh, 
I think uh, as Dustin was, uh, Dustin was saying that, you know, it refer it went back to my childhood. My mother was adopted. And then so she didn't really know what to do with me. And I probably reminded her of herself. So I think she fundamentally might have had like a, you know, lack of love for herself that she, prevented her from showing that love for me. So then, you know, even though I, you know, I'm very self-loving and very confident, then it always, you know, this, there's always a sense of, you know, when I go back to look at my little girl self, I always feel like, huh, that little ugly duckling is not really loved or deserves to be loved for some reason. And then so for some reason that, you know, distilled this very, very deep layer of perhaps, I, I guess you would call it insecurity or lack of self-love, that doesn't actually really manifest in other ways. Okay. Um, it doesn't really L manifest, so yeah. L Lillian, as, as um as important as these pieces can be, I'm also being very, a little time uh, conscious and aware. So the, mm -hmm. uh, I'm just gonna get a little bit more specific. When, when we met, um, the, what I picked up in almost everything that uh, you would say to me was uh, this, the speech pattern would move towards uh, you. You know how when you have this experience and you, you, know, you feel really excited or you feel really scared and then this would happen and then you, know, you end up feeling uh, better afterwards. Everything was kind of spoken to in that type of uh, uh, um, language patterning. It was all uh, second person, placing the experience um, outward and when I first asked you about it, uh, it was very salient for me. It, was, it just, you know, it was very present for me. So when I first uh, asked you about it and you start bringing your attention to it and uh, you just kind of experimented with um, what it would be like to say that same thing, except with like ownership of the experience and putting it in the I term. Uh, my, my recollection was that you, you get, you kept, kind of stopping yourself uh, uh you're like whoa this is weird uh, <laughs> uh, do you remember what i'm speaking of yeah yeah so um so for some reason when we practiced um first of all it was really difficult i you know i couldn't do it uh you know i would i would start to talk about my experiences saying you know you know when this happens you feel like this and then you do this you know when i'm talking about myself and then and then what would happen is that Dustin would correct me and I would try again saying, I feel this. And when I, when I do this, I, I would feel this way. And I would do that and I would feel kind of lopsided a little bit. And then so it just felt really strange. And then so, yeah, so that's kind of, so that was my experience when I first so, met you when we first practiced. So I'm, I'm doing my best to recall the things that you shared with me at the time. What you shared with me at the time was that in doing so, it, it was, uh, you start feeling that by speaking in the you sense all the time, it, it was a, a way to kind of distance yourself more from what you were feeling or experiencing. Uh, it was creating these certain uh, barriers or boundaries to uh, that when you played with uh, trying on the I and the claiming of, of your own experience, it, it felt like it, it felt overwhelming i believe you described it as feeling like whoa this it, it it has you feel more connected into the experience so things that were uncomfortable uh, rather than dissociating from it you had to feel the discomfort am i quoting you correctly paraphrasing correctly. that's right so yeah i think i i probably said that it made me feel very vulnerable and then i really did not like that feeling whereas if i can use the word we when i talk about it then I can really look at it as a third person or as someone who's observing this from a distance. So I'm kind of always emotionally safe. Um, so, so, so it felt very vulnerable. And so what, it didn't feel what about good. now, you know, you've had some time to uh, continue to play and explore with this. I know it's been a transition. It hasn't been a, a you know, black and white total shift, but um, how do you feel that making that that shift in your language patterns has affected your life, if at all? Um, so, oh, that's my meditation, one minute meditation timer going off. That's great. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, um, um, 
to be honest with you, it's very, very subtle. Mm -hmm. I think, um, I think how it feels is that it just makes you a little more present, but it's so it subtle that I think you'll present? actually, uh, <laughs> 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 Oh my God. Okay. I guess I haven't. <laughs> <shoot you. laughs> You're killing me. <laughs> um, so uh, it makes me feel, oh yeah, it feels really vulnerable. It's really weird. <laughs> so it makes me feel, oh, it feels really weird. So uh, it makes me feel really, really present. And then, um, then you're actually, even though it feels more vulnerable, um, I feel like I can actually more be in this moment and actually experience it for myself more. You know, so I think it's, it's just a deeper, deeper, scarier, way of being that's probably feels it, it feels like it's the right thing yeah. to do thank you mm -hmm. um i'm going to have to uh, hit pause on this uh for now um as you can see there's a there's a lot here and that um there's pl <laughs> there's plenty that uh, we can play with and explore and lillian you know you've been really open and, and really vulnerable um, in uh, sharing your truth. I'm really glad personally that we were able to have that experience uh, where you tap back into that other language pattern and then uh, got to try on personalizing it and eyeing it uh, with everybody present. Because uh, this gave everyone an opportunity to kind of see that little like uh, short circuitry <laughs> that kind of occurs for you in the process. So I know we're we're over time, and I'm being very aware of that, especially as we've lost a few people because of that, that timing. Um, there were a couple questions around. Um, uh, well, that's their choice. I right, saw so Andrew put or uh, Elder wrote, I would also argue that I use you rather than me when I describe something I believe to be general for everybody. In that way, I don't pretend to make myself special. So I want to address both of these things. First of all, uh, and even, even Lillian said something about it, and then Destin corrected me. Um, I, do, I don't like to relate to what I do as correcting anybody, period. Uh, it's, what I like to do is illuminate uh, bring consciousness to that which was unconscious. Uh, see that which previously you were unaware of. Um, what you do with it is entirely up to you. And to, uh, if, you, it, if you want to use the word uh, you rather than I, put it out there versus within yourself, you're welcome to. My invitation really is to do so consciously rather than by default as we saw with Lillian this was this was un unconscious language patterns that we were just kind of playing with I invited her to try something on this and everything else that you hear from me all it is really is an invitation to try something on try it on how does this work how does this feel how does this affect your life uh, is it is it adding some, something in your life is it taking something away if it's working great keep it if not Put it down. With that said, I know that we are at, uh, at time. I want to thank you all for being here today. And um, uh, many of you I don't know at all. So I uh, particularly appreciate your interest and I hope that you found something of real value here. Whether it's through something of Ryan's or something of Lillian's, please, I invite you to, to take a note, write it down, something that really struck you from today, something that um, maybe a new idea, an insight that you had, maybe something that was said directly, or maybe something that uh, just tonight, something that came to you that in some way seemed unrelated, but somehow this got triggered during this, uh, during this time together. Put it down on paper or digital paper, whichever. And, and explore over this next day and, all, and this week, what can you do? Uh, what can you do to just implement some, what can you try on and see how it affects your life? In January, I'm, uh, in closing, I just want to say in January, I am leading a 300-person uh, transformational event in Los Angeles called Evolve Live, a spiritual sexual transformation. 
And uh, if you found some value in this and kind of getting a sense of who I am, where I'm coming from, and an aspects of the work that I bring forth, what we're doing with the Evolve Live is, um, well, I really look at it as a culmination of my work to date, as the most, um, this is the deepest part of my message and how can I help you create as much uh, real transformation and change in your life as possible in the span of two and a half days. Uh, we've kept the the uh, cost of these tickets quite low for the weekend, and um, to make it accessible as accessible as possible for you, we are just finishing an incredible uh, uh, video that we've done done with Elevate Films to kind of put the word out about uh, this event. And really, this event is about kind of ending the battle of the sexes, really, about healing those places within us individually and then in how we relate to one another so that we can take this, this age-old battle that seems to go on with men and women trying to one-up them each other or being in this struggle and bury it. Because if things are ever going to change, it requires a true consciousness shift and that starts with us. Check out EvolveLiveLA.com and uh, now would be the time to get your tickets while they're still cheap. And uh, I wanna thank you all for being on here with us. That weekend will be truly uh, exceptional. And I look forward to celebrating with you all and sharing in a, in a powerful transformational experience with you all. Thank you for this time and have a beautiful week.